Hello, good to see you all again. It's Professor Gray and it's time for week 13 of our freshman English course. Uh, wow, week 13. That means next week, you realize, next week, Friday, is your final exam, 6.30. Hmm, that's right. Um, you probably have the information about the, the uh, well, the time is 6.30 to 7.30 and the, uh, classrooms that you'll be in. I'll send each class an individual email uh, about that in case you don't know it, but uh, you'll each, there will be different classes in different classrooms. I think each room will have two classes in it, so we have enough room for distancing. Uh, you must come here to the university. You can wear a mask. Uh, we'll have hand sanitizer. We'll be spaced apart, so you won't be too close to anyone. Everything will be fine. We did this last semester and it worked fine. So please don't worry, the test will go well. Uh, this week in our class, um, uh, we're gonna finish up the work. Uh, this is our last lecture video. Uh, this week, I'm gonna give you a video reviewing the work, the homework from last week, uh, a little information about the final exam. And of course, this week, the main thing really is the online listening final test. Um, <coughs> Your attendance this week is just taking the test. If you make the test and get it to me on time, then you're here. If you're late submitting the test, then you're late for class this week. So be ready for the test. Uh, be at your computer a few minutes beforehand, ready to go. As, as we did with the midterm test, uh, you're, you'll get the test. You'll have a certain amount of time to finish it. And then to get me your answers within that time. If you're one to five minutes late, you lose 20%. After five minutes, you get a zero. Uh, now, in the te in, when I send you the email, I'll tell you how much time you have to complete the test. And uh, let's see, yeah, and like with the midterm, uh, you can send me the answers directly in the email, which is probably faster and easier, or you can use the answer sheet that I attach to the test when I send it to you. It's up to you how you do it, as long as I get the answers from you in the amount of time I ask. Um, part G was the written homework. That was very well done, uh, page 189. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of you had some clever ideas. You know, a lot of you said artists. Artists would make good eyewitnesses because they pay very close attention to detail. Um, yeah, people who are uh, maybe know the people well, you know, um, they, they know little things about how the person looks or they've seen the person a lot. Uh, quite interesting, some of your answers. And almost everybody said that we should not uh, eliminate eyewitness testimony. Uh, a couple of you had some interesting reasons for eliminating it, but the general consensus was we need to have eyewitness testimony uh, because sometimes that's the only evidence we have in, in a case. Unfortunately, things can go wrong. People can lie deliberately. People can make mistakes. People are people. Yes, very good point. But we've got to use whatever evidence we can if we want to solve a crime. Okay, uh, the other homework was uh, sections E, F, and I. Let's look at section E, page 185, E. In English, the verb and noun forms of some words are the same. For example, change and change. Change, a change change to change, noun, verb. Uh, use the correct tense of the verb, either positive or negative, singular or plural form of the noun, and encircle noun or verb. Number one, many people believe that the weather influences our feelings. Verb with an S. I influence, you influence, he influences. The weather influences must be an S or it's wrong. However, the strength of this influence has not been proven. Noun, just influence. Number two, film. Unfortunately, John won't film our high school reunion next month. Negative, must be negative. Unfortunately means you know, bad news. He won't film it. Why? His films of social gatherings are always interesting, so we are very disappointed. Okay, social gatherings like our high school reunion. Films, plural, S. First one, verb, won't film. Second one, films, plural with an S. R, interesting, R is plural, films, plural. Number three, pre people frequently write attacks on politicians. 
but politicians do not always pay attention to them, plural, them, attacks, plural, them, plural. Attacks, noun, circle noun with an S, plural. Uh, people usually attack the politician's dishonesty. Attack, verb, just the same word, attack. Number four, Margaret was the only witness to a serious car accident, singular, only one witness. No plural, noun. Uh, as soon as she witnessed the accident, verb. Verb, ed, witnessed, she called, ed. Witnessed, called, ed, ed, past tense. Number five, Susan and Emily are twin sisters. Pe people frequently mistake Emily for Susan and Susan for Emily because they look alike, verb. They mistake them, they confuse them. Sometimes such mistakes, s, plural, in identity are funny. Mistakes, such Mistakes must be pluralized, noun. Question, the police uh, didn't question the suspect until his lawyer arrived. They waited for the lawyer and then asked him very specific questions with an S, noun. Okay, ne negative, verb must be negative. The police didn't question the suspect until the lawyer arrived. Then when the lawyer arrived, they asked him many very specific questions with an S. Didn't question, verb, questions, noun. Part two, in English, there are several ways verbs change to nouns. Some verbs become nouns by adding the suffix ence or ance. For example, insist, verb becomes insistence, noun. Use the correct tense, positive, negative, singular, plural, and the usual rules. When a baby is born, it depends on its parents completely. It depends, okay? Verb, I depend, you depend, the baby depends. He depends, she depends, it depends, S. No S, it's wrong. As it grows up, the child's dependence on its parents decreases, dependence, noun. Number two, Angela's coat and Debbie's coat, in color, both, they are both blue. They are both the same color, therefore they don't differ in color. Verb, don't differ, negative, must be negative. The only differences between the two are size and material, one, two, two differences, plural. Don't differ, differences. Number three, snow in April is an unusual occurrence. An, momo, noun. A, noun, an, noun. An, occurrence, an unusual occurrence. In fact, snow doesn't occur very often, even in the winter. Doesn't, must be negative. It doesn't occur often, only two or three inches fall during the entire season. Doesn't occur very often. Occurrence, doesn't occur. Number four, the nurses didn't assist the doctor today, but they will help her during the operation tomorrow. Not today, but, but they will help. But shows opposite. But they will help means today they didn't help or I guess you could say today they won't help. That would be okay too. The doctor will need their assistance now to give her surgical instruments. Okay, number four, didn't assist or won't assist today, but they will assist tomorrow. They, the doctor needs their assistance tomorrow. Number five, the pe president made a special appearance, a uh, noun, a uh, appearance on TV, his he appeared very calm, but his news was serious. Uh, past tense, was, made, appeared, ed, must be past tense. Number, number uh, sorry, that's all, uh, F, part F, not number F, part F, vocabulary in context. Number one, a civilian, become a civilian, not military, not police, just regular civilian, regular citizen. Number two, victims, the two victims, to the hospital, number three, guilty. Number four, testimony, as a result of her testimony, her statement in court. Number five, evidence, they look for evidence such as fingerprints, footprints, hair, clothing. Number six, bitter, he has become very bitter towards his old company, bitter, angry, not happy. Number seven, innocent, He uh, many people believe Ronald had murdered his wife, but opposite, he was innocent, he did not murder her opposite. Not murdered, didn't do it, he was innocent. Number eight, despite, 
Number nine, similar. They look very similar. Uh, light hair, blue eyes, similar. And number 10, mistake. The waitress made a mistake. She gave me coffee instead of tea. Mistake. Last thing, last assignment, last homework assignment in our book. I, the close quiz. Wow, it's a long one. Listen carefully. I'll just give you the answers quickly here. Number one, bitter, bitter memories. Number two, testimony of the two victims. Number two, testimony. Number three, victims. Number four, appearance, similar in appearance. Number five, mistake. The women had made a mistake <clears throat> in identity. Number six, yet, yet, however, even though. Number seven, occurred, happened, occurred. Number eight, influence. Many factors influence the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. Number nine, instance, for instance. Number 10, similar, similar faces. Number 11, questions. <clears throat> the questions they ask have an effect on them. Number 12, reliable. Are some witnesses more reliable than others? Number 13, crimes. Number 14, civilians. Number 15, despite, despite all the possibilities, courts cannot exclude eyewitness testimony. Number 16, evidence. Number 17, eyewitness. Number 18, judges. Uh, the jurors and not the judges who determine the accuracy. It's up to the jury to make the decision. Number 19, innocent. And number 20, guilty. You can close your book. We're done. That's it. That's all. Our, look at how messy my book is. Teachers always have books that they use a lot uh, over the years, so uh, it gets it gets a little beat up, but that's okay. That's that's part of uh, teaching with a book. So we've done all of our work. Good job, everyone. Congratulations. All the work for the course is done. Now we just have to prepare, study, review, and get ready for our final exam next Friday. Now you must come a bit early. Don't show up right at 6.30. Get to the room maybe 10 minutes early, minimum five minutes early. Hey, once 6.30 hits, everybody's working. We don't want interruptions. We don't want people walking in late, interrupting. No, that's not good. Get there early, sit down, relax, get prepared. Get in your seat, get your pencil, pen out, get prepared for the test. I guess pencil is probably better for this test. Um, as I told you in the notes, the final exam will cover chapters 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 13. <clears throat> you should review those chapters. Okay? Now, what's on the exam? Five of those six chapters, five of the six, don't know which ones, but you will read passages that are new passages that are on the same topics as five of those six chapters that I mentioned. So it'll be a, a brand new passage, but the same topic. So a lot of the, similar uh, key points, similar um, vocabulary, grammar, expressions, very similar, but a new, a new reading. So you're gonna read a new passage and you're gonna answer questions on it. Okay, questions based on the passage, like questions that you answer in the textbook during the semester. Reviewing the passages in those eight chapters is a very good idea. Hey, you're, you're reviewing the main points, the key, the, some key vocabulary, expressions, and so on. Be familiar with the topics. It will help you. Hey, there will also be vocabulary from those chapters. Review the vocabulary. Review the key points, the vocabulary from those readings, from those chapters. Finally, grammar. Now, the grammar will be tough. It will be based on the grammar from the chapters. You should review the grammar that we studied in those six chapters, all right? Now, it's very strict. It's either right or wrong. If you do not have the right word, the right form, the right grammar in the sentence, the question is wrong. This is why we've been practicing it all semester, okay? Positive, negative, okay? Read carefully. Singular, plural, read carefully. Pet tense, read carefully. Is it past, is it present, is it future? Any mistake in tense, any mistake in positive negative, any mistake in singular plural, and the answer is wrong. It's zero or one. Okay. Be very careful on the test. Study hard, prepare well. Know the vocabulary, know the grammar, and know the topics that we talked about this semester. Okay, so this week there's no homework, just review. 
Uh, you don't need to email me, but you need to take the listening test. Your attendance is based on the listening test that you will take this week. At the end of the week, I'll send you an email with, the, uh, uh, with your score. And if you want to ask me anything about your score, then you can email me, uh, you know, the next, uh, uh, you can email me after you get my email. Uh, I'm not sending an answer key to you, um, so you can ask me if you're not sure. Um, I'm not going to go over it in a, in a video. I'm not going to send a video next week, but I will answer individual questions and emails if you have them. Next week, there's no video. You should dedicate your time to studying and preparing for our final. On Friday, be at the room that you're assigned to be at a few minutes early. Five to ten minutes early is good. Be ready to go with a pencil. Okay, Get ready. Be prepared. Um, the test will take one hour. Some of you might finish early. I don't know. I doubt it. But if you do, then that's fine. But... Um, You'll have after, after one hour, that's it. Everybody, pen, pencils down, everything, stop. So time is very important on the final exam. <clears throat> if you have any questions about the final, of course, you can ask me in an email, as always. Uh, that's, that's great. Thank you. You've been great students. Uh, I'm really happy we will have a chance to meet at least once. I'm sad that we were only meeting once. I wish we could have had a normal semester. Uh, hopefully that will come soon. Maybe next semester, maybe next year. I don't know, but we're all hoping for it. Um, you've, done a, uh, you've done a wonderful job. Uh, I, I appreciate all your hard work. I know it's not easy, but together we've, we've been able to get through a semester. Um, and, and a lot of it's thanks to you, your dedication and your perseverance. Watch the video, do the work, send me the email. As long as you've done that all semester, you've received the credit for it, and that will help your grade. I'm trying to give the best grades possible because I know it hasn't been easy, and so I'll follow the university rules on grading, but I'll try very hard to be as generous as possible when giving the final grades. A lot of that depends, of course, on your effort and um, you know, getting the work done, getting it done on time, and doing a good job on the work, effort being on time and making a good effort and getting the work done. Those are very important things in our class. Of course, your scores are important too, uh, but I'm gonna weigh everything in and try to give the best and fairest grades possible. I'm gonna email you a small assignment uh, for week 15. I'll send it after the exam on Friday and I'll just ask you to just write a few, uh, answer a few questions and talk about the class. So week 15, we will not have a class or a video, but I will send you an email in week 15. And for your attendance, you need to answer that email in week 15 with uh, just a few short words uh, based on what I tell you in the email. Okay, good luck everyone. Study hard, prepare well, I'll see you next Friday. Have a great week. Bye-bye.